Hey everyone, my name's Eileen. Welcome to Haunted Crafting. Now, this year the Portland District Library is bringing some Halloween fun to your household since we can't have you here at the library to do some crafting projects with us. And if you joined us earlier this month, you made some spooky spidery dream catchers with me already. Today, we are going to be making lighted luminaries. Now, a luminary is basically just something that you put a candle into and it can shine the light through and you'll see a little picture or an image and it'll light it up really nice and fun. Before I go over what is in your take and make bag, I wanted to show you a finished example of a lighted luminary. That way you know what we're working towards today. So here is my finished example. This is the front of it and you can see we've created this little window and it looks like there's a tree that you're seeing outside and it's got some red, yellow, and orange tissue paper to create fall colored leaves on that tree. And then you can see I've got a couple of just stickers for decorating and then on the back I just wrote a little message, happy fall, and stuck some more stickers on. Now, since this is a luminary and I want to show you guys what it actually looks like with the candle inside, I'm going to show you what it looks like with the lights turned off. So give me just one second. Here is what the lighted luminary looks like in the dark. So we've got the lights turned off and the electronic candle turned on on the inside. And you can see it provides just a nice little glow and you can see some of the window pane and some of the tree and the leaves. And it just looks like very fallish outside through our little window that we've made. Next, I would like to go over what you received in your take and make bag. You should have received your take and make bag here at the library when you registered for this program. And if you don't already have your take and make bag, that means you did not register for the program at the library. Now, there's two ways to register for our take and make bag programs. The first way is to come into the library and stop at the youth desk. We take down some brief registration information and you'll receive your take and make bag. The second way to register for our take and make bag program is to drive to the library, call us from the parking parking lot and we'll bring them out to you curbside. All right, so here we go. This is what your take and make bag looks like. It's got a sticker on the front that says Haunted Crafting Lighted Luminaries and that's gonna be the project we're doing today. Everything that you see here on the table, you should have received in your take and make bag. We have our bag, the brown bag for the lighted luminary, and that's got a rectangle cut out of the front. Then you should have received two sheets of contact paper, three sheets of tissue paper, one yellow, one red, and one orange. Then there should be six strips of black paper, and three of these should be a little bit longer and three of them a little bit shorter. And we're gonna use those to create our window. Then you should have received some stickers, and there should be uh, some on some brown paper, some on some blue paper, and some on some green or teal paper. And the last three things you should have received is a glue stick, a black permanent marker, and then this little lighted electronic candle. And other than that, you should only need a pair of scissors. So make sure to grab a pair of scissors and have those handy before you get started today. Before we get started with the step-by-step -step instructions for this project, I wanted to show you guys another up-close shot of my lighted luminary, my finished product. Now, I wanted to show you this because I am expecting everybody's luminary to look slightly different than mine. No two luminaries should be identical. So as we go through the step-by-step -step instructions, I'm gonna give you guys suggestions and tips on how you can do things a little bit differently. Um, I know some people are a lot more creative than I am and more artistic. Um, so I'm again, I'm just gonna recommend some other things that you guys can try if you have maybe some other colored crayons or other you know stickers that you wanna add. There's so many things that you can add if you have items at home, um, but we just gave you some of the basics to get you started today. For step one of this project, you're going to want to grab your brown paper bag with that rectangle cut out of it and one of your pieces of contact paper. Now, if you don't know what contact paper is, it's basically just a clear, sticky paper. So it's got a backing to it, which has this light blue lettering on it, and then the front you can just kind of see is clear. So once we peel off this backing, it's just gonna be really, really sticky on one side and just flat and smooth on the other side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel the backing off of this. So we're gonna take a corner and we're just gonna try to get it to lift up. And this can be a little bit tricky, so if you need some help, maybe ask a, an adult in your household or an older sibling. So you can see there that I've gone and peeled that off and we can throw away the backing. We won't need that anymore. 
And if you look closely, you can tell that the contact paper is just a little bit bigger than the rectangle that we've cut out of your brown paper bag. And the reason that is, is because once we have decorated our contact paper sheet here, we're actually gonna slide it inside our bag and use the border of the contact paper to stick it to the inside of the bag. So as we do this next step, you're gonna to wanna to leave a border of contact paper, the sticky part, blank so that it can stick to the inside of your bag. All right? So once we've taken the contact paper off of our first sheet, we are going to grab the three colors of tissue paper that we have. So here we have our three colors of tissue paper. Now you could decide you only wanna use two colors or you could decide to use all three. Whatever you wanna do here, again, there's a lot of creative freedom on this part. So what I did is I just took each of the colors and tore them into little pieces. And this is what we're gonna to use to create our tree on our contact paper here. So I'm just going and I'm not really making them perfect. I'm just gonna rip them how I, how I see them. And so we're just gonna rip, rip, rip. And once you're done ripping, you can go ahead and start adding them to your contact paper. Now what I did, because I wanted just a little bit of texture to mine, is I decided to crumple mine up before I stuck them on the contact paper. So I went up and just kind of crinkled them, give them a little bit of texture so that they're not completely flat. All right, so here I've got all of my crumpled up tissue paper colors. And I've got my clear piece of contact paper. And again, reminder that we want to leave a blank border of sticky around this sheet of contact paper. All right. So here I go. I'm just going to start sticking my tissue paper in all sorts of different random colors. We've got all different shapes of tissue paper here um, because I just kind of haphazardly ripped at it. And again, I'm leaving some kind of a border. So you can see here I've got sticky border all the way around that corner that I'm done with. And you're just going to keep adding your tissue paper to your contact paper until you've got it covered the way that you want it to look. If you decide that you just want an orange tree, you could just take that whole sheet of contact paper or that whole sheet of orange tissue paper and just stick it right to your contact paper. You wouldn't even have to rip it or texturize it or anything like that. You can just take it and stick it right on there. If you decided you wanted a yellow tree, you could do the same thing with a sheet of yellow. And again, I've decided to use all my colors because I love all the fall colors. And you can layer them. You don't have to just, you know, stick it perfectly one color per spot. So mine's all sorts of layered, all the different colors. So here is what mine looks like when I'm done with it. So here is my covered piece of contact paper. And again, the border, sticky border on the outside. It's not perfect, but it'll be good enough for what we need it for. So now that you've got that done, we're gonna move on to the next step of putting it into our brown paper bag. For this step, we need our brown paper bag and the piece of contact paper that we just covered in all of our colors of tissue paper. Now this part is a little bit tricky, so I want you to be careful with your brown bag because what you need to do is, if you can just open it from the top, the top is the side with the handles, if you can just kind of peek it open a little bit and make sure to kind of just stretch it out a little bit. Now you don't have to open it all the way yet, okay? And what we're going to do is we are going to slide our piece of contact paper into our brown bag. Okay, and it might get a little bit stuck, so just work it in there. Again, this part is probably the trickiest part. So we're gonna slide it in there and we're gonna line up our colors so that they fill that rectangle that's cut out of the front. Okay, and so once you've slid it in there, and you've got most of your colors showing through, you could push down on the front there. All right, and we're just gonna make sure that that border of contact paper on the inside is stuck to the inside, okay? So there is our finished step two. And hopefully, I don't know what this is gonna look like, but maybe there you guys can see my row of contact paper is just stuck on the inside there. And I can still, you can still see all the flaps and everything else are free from the sticky part of the contact paper. It's just on the one side inside. 
For the next step of our lighted luminary, we are going to be continuing to work on our window right here. So what you need is your brown paper bag, your second sheet of contact paper, and those handy pair of scissors I asked you to grab. We want to cover the outside of our tissue paper here because we want to create that finished window. So what we're going to do is I want to trim my contact paper just a little bit. We still need an edge around our contact paper to be able to stick it around the brown bag. But as you can see here, my contact paper is quite a bit bigger than the actual size of my window. So I'm going to trim just one set of squares off from my contact paper on each side. So one row of squares I've cut off. Now, my second sheet of contact paper is ready to stick onto my brown bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to peel that off again and we're going to separate the backing from the clear contact paper. And again, this part can be really tricky to do. Um, I'm somebody that has really dry hands and so I struggle with this a lot. And my nails aren't always super long. So, okay, so now once I've got that corner up, I can just peel away and we can throw away the backing. So here we have my sheet of contact paper without the backing on it, and I am going to line it up over my window, and I'm just going to push it down. And again, you want some of that clear contact paper stuck to the brown bag so that it actually sticks to something there. And we're just going to push it down and smooth out all those little bubbles. All right. So now we have our luminary bag and our two sheets of contact paper stuck to it with our colored tissue paper in between. For the next step, before we actually add the black strips of paper to create our window border, what we need to do is we need to draw our tree. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take our black permanent marker and we're just gonna go ahead and take that cap off. And we're just gonna draw a tree right here over our contact paper, right on our contact paper. Now, if you don't want to actually draw a trunk and some branches, then you don't have to. You can just leave it decorated with your color tissue paper. Um, and then we can add the black strips here in just a few minutes to create our window. So I'm gonna draw the base of my trunk here. And I am not a super artist, so Again, I'm just gonna do my best to draw the bottom of my trunk here, and then I'm gonna draw one branch that goes off to the side, and you could draw your tree any way you want. I'm just kinda eyeballing it. I'm gonna draw one up the center here, and again, I'm gonna eyeball it. here. Color that in super dark there. And then I'm just going to add some smaller branches coming off of my tree here. You could make yours a super skinny tree and make it super, all super thin branches. You could decide, I don't want a tree, I want a pumpkin, and draw a pumpkin figure. You could draw an animal, too. Again, there's a lot of creativity that could go into this. You don't have to do the tree like I am. I think anything will look cute drawn on here. All right, so there is my finished tree trunk and branches. And the important part after you're done with your tree is to give it time to dry. Now you can blow on it, or you could wave it around, or you could just let it sit there for five or 10 minutes and let it air dry. Whatever you choose to do, just make sure it's completely dry before you get to the next step. Because if you start smushing your hand all over it and it's still wet, you're gonna have smudges and you're gonna have black stuff all over your hands. So again, make sure it dries before you move on to the next step. For the next step in our project, we're going to be creating our window pane around our contact paper leaf tree. What you need is your brown paper bag, 
your six strips of black paper in the two sizes, your glue stick, and then your trusty pair of scissors, depending on how creative you want to get with this. Now I'm going to show you guys my example again because I used the border on the outside and then I cut my middle strips here a little bit skinnier. But again, you can do a couple of different things here. You could decide not to do any window border and just leave your bag as is, and that's totally fine too. You could decide to just do a black border around the outside using your two of your long pieces and two of your skinny pieces. You could decide you want just the inside border and use just one of the big pieces and one of the little pieces just like that. Now I'm going to mirror what I did for my example one. So I'm going to go ahead and get my glue stick open and I'm going to use some of my scrap contact paper backing to use to actually adhere the glue onto the strips just so I don't get it all over the table here. So I'm going to take one of my long strips and put glue on it. And I'm going to stick that on this side of the bag. And then I'm going to take another one of my long strips and I'm going to put it on the opposite side. And I'm going to try to make it so that they're a little bit level here. So even at the top and even at the bottom. And then I'm going to take two of my smaller strips. So here's the first one. And I'm going to put that at the bottom push it down so it sticks and then I'm going to take my second small strip and put more glue on that and put that down and then I'm going to push it down and sometimes they need a little bit more pressure put on them to stick but there's what we look it looks like so far so we have just the border around the outside of our window now, again, you could decide to just leave it just as is. You could go ahead and add the last two strips for your whole window. What I'm going to actually do, because I want to see more of my tree and my leaves pop through, is I'm going to cut these last two strips in half so that I have skinny window pane in the middle there. So here we go. We're going to cut that in half, and I'm going to put the strips to the side, and then I'm going to cut my other one in half. And again, this is just so that I have skinnier strips for the middle. Now I'm going to put glue on both of those and make a little plus sign with them in the center of my window. So here you go. Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and show you a close up. There is my finished window. Once you are done gluing on the black strips to create your window on your luminary, you're going to want to give that glue time to dry. So give it at least, I would say, 10 or 15 minutes just to get a little bit drier. You don't want any of your pieces falling off. For this last step, you're going to take all of your stickers and your black marker and you're just going to finish decorating both sides of your luminary. So by both sides, I mean the front with your window and the back that's completely blank right now. So for the front, I am going to take some of my pumpkins and I'm going to make a little pile of pumpkins down here because I just love pumpkins during October and around Halloween. And then I just also just really love these little animals. So I'm going to stick a couple animals around my scene here. I'm even going to put an owl sitting on my tree. And then I want some of these leaves. I'm going to put these on the tree, the acorn, all sorts of stickers on my tree on the front here. those all over and I'm just going to show you an up close so there you can see my little pumpkin patch with my little animal there and my owl up in my tree with some leaves. So super cute and on the back I, I decided I wanted to write a little fun phrase so on the back of my luminary I decided I just wanted to write happy fall so I'm going to take my marker and I am going to write happy fall 
You could decide to write Happy Halloween. You don't have to write anything if you don't want to. You could draw some pictures. You could draw a pumpkin. If you have some crayons at home, you could pull out all your crayons or markers and you could decide to draw a pumpkin patch or some cute fun animals. There's all sorts of things that you can draw that are fall or Halloween themed. Now, because I love stickers, I'm just gonna keep taking more and more of my stickers to decorate my luminary. And you're also gonna to wanna to fold over this back flap here because again, this will be the back side, so you can kinda of fold that down and continue to decorate on there. I'm gonna add a bunch of my turkeys down here. All my little animals. And again, you could do this all day long, sitting here putting stickers on, decorating. You could even decide you wanted to decorate the side of your luminary. So there's these two sides of your bag. You could decorate those. Do whatever you want, but make sure to decorate it fully and make sure to get it complete the way you want it looking. So there's some of my animal stickers on the bottom. Once you have fully decorated the front and the back and the sides, if you choose to decorate the sides, you have got your finished luminary. And what you need to do is grab that electronic candle that's in your bag. So here's what your electronic candle looks like, okay? Now, some of them still have a little plastic piece on the bottom, a little flap that you're gonna pull out and that'll start the battery up for you. So once you've pulled out that little plastic part, you can go ahead and turn it on and you'll see that it actually turns on for us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on our, loom, our candle, our electronic candle. We are gonna very carefully open up our bag so it stands up. So here we go, we've opened up our bag. Here's the inside. And we're gonna go ahead and stand it up. And we're gonna put our candle right on the inside there. Now you can go ahead and turn off the lights in your house and your luminary should light up and you should be able to see the tree through the front. And there we have it, your lighted luminary is complete. Thank you all so much for crafting along with me today. I hope you enjoyed making your lighted luminary as much as I did. Now, since you guys can't be here at the library to do these projects with us, we would love to see a picture or a video of your finished luminary. Please make sure to send us a picture or a video to the email address that you see on the screen below. And thank you all again so much for joining us for Haunted Crafting Lighted Luminaries. Now, before I say my final goodbye for today, I wanna to show you guys one more sneak peek of the finished luminaries, both in the daytime and with the lights turned off. So here you go.